New York City is famous for its deep canyons, the man-made glass and steel kind. But ask New Yorkers where to find a natural canyon, and they'd probably point across the Hudson River toward Arizona's Grand Canyon, some 2,000 miles to the west of here. They almost certainly wouldn't tell you about the Hudson Canyon that begins a little more than 100 miles from here and deepens into a truly spectacular place, teeming with exotic and breathtaking species of plants and animals. In fact, the ocean floor just off the eastern United States is deeply carved with hidden canyons. There's 15 major deeply incised canyons along the east coast of the United States. At times of lower sea level, uh, rivers ran out across the continental shelf and carved out the top parts of the canyons. Some are almost as long as the Grand Canyon and nearly as deep. Just east of those canyons, four extinct volcanoes called seamounts rise from the ocean floor. They're part of a chain that extends down to Bermuda. Together, the canyons and seamounts are home to an extraordinary universe of life. Now, these pristine canyons and seamounts are vulnerable to bottom trawling, seismic exploration, and oil and gas drilling. We've been studying these places using research submarines and remotely operated vehicles. It's just like being an astronaut. And essentially, you're climbing the mountain from the top down, kind of like Darwin walking for the first time on the shores of the Galapagos Islands. We're seeing landscapes that no one's ever seen before. The seafloor drops off to the very deep sea, and the world is entirely different. It's a world of completely different kinds of animals. It's a world of darkness and cold, but to other creatures, it is the home that they have. Hundreds of species thrive in these areas, many of them rare or unique. It's literally a Dr. Seuss's garden and farm down there. The fact that in the North Atlantic, one of the most well-studied places in the world's ocean, that we can still find big organisms yet to be described, to me, is amazing. Water currents carry nutrients into the canyons from the coast. The canyon's hard surfaces provide a solid foundation for corals, sponges, and anemones, and their ruggedness offers infinite places for marine life to hide, forage, and breed. There's a forest of whip corals and fan corals and uh, very large single polyp uh, deep sea corals. And again, the fact that they're small belies their advanced ages, hundreds of years old. Deep sea corals are extraordinary organisms. They're not only beautiful and ecologically important, but they're really fragile and need explicit protection. The corals and sponges themselves provide shelter for many other animals that live on them, in them, eat them, use them for cover, and then they provide food for larger beasts like fishes. These Atlantic waters are also an important food source for humans. Their bounty has attracted generations of commercial and sport fishermen. The canyons and seamounts are oases in the vast Atlantic. Huge schools of squid and mackerel forage in these waters. Tilefish, lobsters, and red crab, tuna, marlin, swordfish, dolphins, and even the occasional sea turtle are attracted to the feast. Whales traverse the canyons, including endangered sperm whales which can consume up to a ton of deep water squid and fish every day. The desire to fish deeper and deeper uh, continues to outrace our ability to understand how these places work. Some threats, like bottom trawling, can physically remove those reefs that took hundreds of years to build in a matter of minutes. Nets, up to 100 feet across, held open with massive steel plates, ravage the ocean bottom, crushing marine habitat. The effect of bottom trawling is not unlike bulldozing or clear-cutting a forest. Anything that's in its path will turn to rubble. Until recently, these deep places were simply out of reach of people. Uh, we have increased our ability to get out and get down as technology has developed, and that's why it has become an issue where for the entire history of humanity, it, w it wasn't even a question. We've seen again and again how oil spills can devastate marine life. Even oil and gas exploration subjects these delicate marine environments to potentially deadly threats. When oil and gas industries look for fossil fuel deposits under the seafloor, they drag arrays of air guns behind boats, 40 at a time sometimes, and they shoot off these guns targeting the seafloor 
and listen to the noise it reverberates. And to the ear of a marine mammal, it's an enormously loud noise. It's not nuisance level. It's not like living near an airport. It's like living on a carmel. And they are unable to do their business. They're unable to forage. They're unable to find their mates. They're unable to communicate with their children. We would never allow the Grand Canyon to be ruined by oil and gas drilling or stripped of its plant and animal life. Yet, just off the shores of our largest eastern cities, treasures of similar value face just that threat. Choosing some places that we don't want to impact is going to be key to conserving these communities into the future. There is no wisdom tradition in the history of the world or any of the scripture that says that the world is ours to destroy. It's always ours to pass on. For now, this region remains largely untouched. It's been protected for centuries, essentially by our ignorance, our inability to see it. But not anymore. Now that we know and can reach the riches it contains, we can plunder them or protect them. <laughs>